Welcome to a new episode of Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid Ahmed. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hacks and Hobbies. The more I think about Hacks and Hobbies, it's very it's getting very clear to me as I do this every day although it's only been three days of continuous episodes hobbies what are hobbies we all know what hobbies are but then eventually you make your hobby a full-time job because you're so passionate about this hobby that you just continue on pushing forward and making something of this hobby I have way too many hobbies and yes I need to focus on one hobby at a time and I do last year I was very 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 focused on cycling I rode uh, three times a week for anywhere from an hour to two hours per ride and this did not include the travel time to where the bike ride would start. In total, I ended up riding 1,500 miles, which uh, amounted to 75 hours or so. My average speed was probably 14 to 15 miles an hour. Not very fast, but fast enough, I guess. I wanted to be faster. And my plan was this year, 2018, I was going to be faster. I was going to do 2,000 miles. But it didn't happen. There was other things that needed to happen. Um, and you probably already heard. I had a baby. I got into beekeeping. Um, we got a new house last year. So there's a lot of moving parts, lots of variables lot more responsibilities, lot more things to take care of. So, it's been it's been great. It's been amazing. So, one hobby that I haven't talked about, well, I have is video, right? Video taking or video production, filmmaking. And I spent some time in 2016 uh, got to work on three short films. Uh, one of them got published, I think. Two other ones are still in edit mode, and hopefully they'll be out soon. Now you might be wondering, why aren't those other two short films out if I worked on them? Well, I was just... A piece of the puzzle helping to create this these uh, short films it takes a village like literally it takes a village to produce any type of content that requires actors and locations and personal assistants and production assistants it requires a lot of people because you want to execute, you want to create a scene that's in the director's mind. So it takes time. So I was only a piece of a pu the puzzle of uh, creating this content. I was going through some of my content last night and I found a lot of footage. And this footage dates back to 2014. I'm like, wow, I remember that. One was a short commercial we shot. And uh, it's called Friends on Facebook. It's on my YouTube channel. But this was behind the scenes video. Uh, I had mounted a GoPro in my buddy's uh, kitchen. And it was just shooting time lapse. And I was like, yes, I remember we did all that and we had a three camera set up and you can see the whole process of 
put it, setting up the the stage and setting up the the scenes <clears throat> and the recording of the scenes and I was like, whoa, that's so cool. So I'm gonna repurpose that footage um, and post it somewhere, post it on the social medias. So that was exciting. Then. I ran into a folder called Lyft videos. I was like, what are these Lyft videos? I don't remember. And these are all, again, GoPro files. This was when I had a GoPro mounted in my car as I'm doing the Lyft drives or giving people lifts. So there's a lot of me in these videos where I'm just driving around, singing along with the songs. And it looks ridiculous, but it's cool, right? You look back four years from today, like, oh, I did this. That's cool. And then I think it was a week. Mo All of that footage um, was from the same day. It was the weekend, and there was a big um, Rockies game going on. So I was picking up people and dropping them off by the stadium. And telling them, hey, I've got this camera rolling. Do you mind? I'm just going to have a little collage of same driver, different passengers kind of thing. And that was cool. That was the only day that I recorded any footage. I wanted to record more footage on other days. But most of my drives were at night time. So the lighting condition is never, never appropriate or never good enough, especially to record video on the GoPro in the dark. Nah, not going to work. So I do have some plans on doing what I mentioned in that video that I was going to do with those videos. So it called it, it. So the whole process of video production Right. There is a reason why it takes a village to produce anything. Short film, long form film, anything at all, it takes a village. And you can tell that if you've seen any movie at all. At the beginning of the movie, there's all the names. Who's starring in this movie? Who produced it? Right at the bat. Who produced this movie? Which company were companies were involved in distributing this film? Who got together and made this film? Then you have the names of the actors, name of all the people that are going to be on screen, and their acting prowess and uh, experience is shown showcased on the screen. Then, at the end of the movie, the credits roll. Again, we see another list of who all the actors were and what their roles were and what their names were. And then post that, there's more names. There's the production team, the, exec the executive producers, the, production, the producers, uh, the makeup artist, who the casting director was, all of these names, right? So if you think about it, there's thousands of people involved in making one movie and it's amazing how this choreograph comes together in producing some of the finest material of, of entertainment so yeah podcasting is easy now it is thanks to the anchor FM app it's makes my production so much easier gotta have the right tools to do the work and that's that's amazing right if you don't have the right tools it'll take you days to get anything done but when you have the right tools you can get it done swiftly and quickly so what I want to talk about was video production video production is a huge task but if you have the right tools you can do video production 
in a very streamlined fashion. One, what is your tool? Two, what is your material? What is your content? Three, where are you going to shoot it? Four, where are you going to distribute this video and media that you're creating? Five, are you doing live video? Are you doing pre-produced video, pre-scripted? Are you going to go off the bat? So there's so many things that you got to figure out. And once you figure these things out, the execution takes a lot less time to do. So make notes, figure out what you want, how you want it, where you want it. And if you look at the video production process, before any production even begins, the pre-production, the post-production they call it, no, that pre-production they call it, is a lot of work. Right now I am part of a team that's going to be starting to create some web series and the director slash producer is working towards getting the right cast in front of the camera so she's going to go through 40 applicants 40 auditions to pick the best person best few people for the job so this is all pre-production so it's a lot of work and before you even go and pick your cast, you need to figure out what this movie is about, what this short film is about, what this web series is about. So you got to have that idea written down. Once that idea is written down, then you got to have the script behind it. Are you going to go full on nature? or full on natural, are you natural at it? Do you do a lot of talking? Then yes, it, it makes sense to do natural video because you already know the subject. You already know the content that you're gonna produce. We live in a time where video has gotten so big, so much bigger than it used to be. Why and how? Because the tools to create video is in everybody's hand. Like literally, anybody you look around who has a phone, a smartphone, has the tools to create amazing video. All it takes is time, effort, and practice. Everybody that you know who has made it has put in the time and effort to get to where they are. Nobody's gotten it free. Nobody. Sure, some people might have gotten it free, but they did other things that enabled them to get there. Maybe they had a celebrity dad. Maybe they had a celebrity name. Maybe they had a... Not a celebrity name maybe they had some kind of connection that enabled them to get there. So video production is easy. It's the easy stuff. It's how you're going to do it, how consistently are you going to practice this ritual of creating video is what matters. I know I'm great at video. I've done smartphone videos for a long time since the first iPhone came out sure it didn't shoot video or maybe did it it did but as soon as we had the ability to shoot 1080p video on the first iPhone 4 I've been shooting video on my smartphone and we only had a rear-facing camera we didn't have a front-facing camera like we do now we only had a rear-facing camera, so all the video that we shot was horizontal, landscape mode, so we can watch it back on our televisions. We can watch it on YouTube when you upload it. You can watch it on your computer screen. But the And there's a lot of people still, at that time, recording vertical video. There, were, there was even a PSA going on 
uh, that was posted on YouTube that said, please don't shoot vertical video. It's like against vertical video. But what do you see now? Everybody's shooting vertical video. Vertical selfie videos. Thanks to Snapchat, thanks to the explosion of smartphone devices, everyone's doing this, which is fine, which is totally, totally fine because the consumers are using this, the same vertical device. So you're shooting vertical video for consumers who are using vertical device. So you, you're shooting video on your Snap for Snapchat. You're doing Instagram stories. You're doing Facebook stories. <clears throat> All of these platforms support vertical video. They also support horizontal video. Absolutely. Because you can, you can turn that phone sideways and shoot some horizontal video. All that is excellent. But you got to have a game plan of what you're going to do with this video. Where would this video fit in properly? Is this for an Instagram story? Is this for LinkedIn? Is this for Facebook stories? Is this for Snapchat? Snapchat recently, well, I don't know how recent it is, but they recently enabled you to upload pre-recorded vertical videos or yeah, vertical videos on Snapchat. It's made a lot of it's it's enabled that uh, so celebrities can have their production team work on great content and then post it on their snapchat it makes a lot of easy work which is great because now that you've created this vertical video in however format you can brand it you can then post that same video or iteration of the same video on the different platforms you can put on instagram tv you can put on facebook stories you can put on snapchat you can put on youtube apparently the new youtube mobile app also supports vertical video back in the days it didn't but now it is because youtube or google wants to be in the same boat as facebook is with instagram and facebook and Snapchat. Snapchat is the one who tipped. The tipping point was Snapchat. They created, the, they enabled it for everyone to shoot and consume vertical videos. And now the PSA is, all right, if you want to do vertical video, make sure you know where you're going to put it. Because don't put it on don't edit it together with horizontal video because unless you want to zoom in full screen, um, the content is not going to look nice. There's going to be a lot of black bars. And you've probably noticed people are putting text in those black bars. They're putting messages and text and logos and whatnot. So, sure, there's a way of repurposing vertical and horizontal content in each other's spaces but you gotta know what you're doing and you gotta do it right because if you're doing it wrong you've already lost the attention of the people that you're interested in showing this information so yeah that's just a gist of what I've been uh, working with and um, I'll expand on it more on the episode tomorrow and um, hopefully get you some more tips. By the way, I'll be speaking at the LinkedIn local Nova um, meetup that's coming up next Thursday, August 30th. It is going to be in Reston at Make Offices, so make sure you register and um, show up and uh, listen to me talk some more about video production on your smartphone thanks for listening thanks for your messages and questions I really appreciate them I'm still waiting on them and uh, I just posted a video on LinkedIn 
on showing you how you can send me a message. And I'm going to repurpose that video and post it on my Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and on the YouTube channel. Thanks again for listening. <clears throat> Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks again for listening. I hope to hear from you soon. This is Hacks and Hobby. This is Junaid signing off on Hacks and Hobbies.